At any given time, there are literally dozens of medium to large scale petrochemical facilities of all types being proposed in communities all over the country, up and down the Ohio River Valley, down into the Gulf Coast, the Kanawha Valley, dotting rural landscapes hidden from view of most people or along major waterways used by millions of drinking water sources and recreation. So what happens if even a fraction of these projects move forward? The stakes are enormous. On public health, the Ohio River Valley and the rest of Appalachia already struggle with pockets of elevated cancer rates and clusters of rare diseases. Petrochemical facilities release chemicals like benzene and formaldehyde, endocrine disruptors, chemicals that uh, contribute to asthma, birth defects, and cancers. Adding more plants would compound an already serious public health burden. Even when these plants operate within their legal limits, which history shows doesn't always happen, those legal limits still allow enormous amounts of toxic pollution. For example, the Shell Beaver Cracker plant in Pennsylvania is permitted to release over a million pounds of VOCs into that community every single year, legally. And regulators have already cited it for multiple violations. Likewise, the Camores Washington Works facility in West Virginia, now facing litigation, was legally permitted to discharge PFAS chemicals into the Ohio River, and was later found to be exceeding even those allowances. The Shell Cracker and Camores Washington Works are two of the largest flagship plants in the Ohio River Valley, with well-established and well-known brand names, and both of them have been over legal limits. One source citing that the Camores facility was 400 plus percent over their legal discharge limit. If you see one mouse, there are eight more in the walls. The same logic applies here. If two of the most notable plants in the Ohio River Valley, facilities with high profiles and established oversight, are already known to have exceeded their discharge limits, how many others might also be over their limits but not being caught? especially given that much of the oversight and monitoring is based on company self-reporting. This is an enormous issue for public health and regional ecology. 